Hello everyone, I welcome you all to lecture 3 on functions in Python programming. In lecture 1 and lecture 2, we have seen the certain details about the user defined functions. So, how to define user defined function and the different types of arguments that we can pass. And also, we have seen the scope and lifetime of a variable with respect to the functions we define. And today, let us dive into the certain other details about the functions such as recursive functions, anonymous functions, or we call it as a lambda functions. So what are these uh, functions actually? So recursive function is a function which calls to itself. So in real time scenarios, wherever certain problems which exhibit the behavior of divide and conquer strategy, and also the property of backtracking, in such scenarios, the usage of recursive functions will be a bit easy rather than the using the iterative approach. Every problem that is addressed using an iterative approach can be resolved, also resolved using the recursive functions. But certain problems like like covers of handy problem, uh, which can be solved easily with the help of the recursion rather than writing an iterative approach. So one has to know how the recursive function will work, how the recursive calls are really managed in the computer memory. And then we will look at these anon anonymous functions and lambda functions. Lambda functions are special functions which are defined using the keyword lambda. And in fact, the advantage of lambda function is when we define a normal function, there is a over overhead associated with the jumping of function, the execution flow from function call to function definition. And after finishing the function definition, the control should come back from where, from the place where it is left up initially. So it consumes some time. In case of lambda functions, which really works like inline function, where the, the function that is defined using the lambda keyword. So in fact, that is replaced with the an expression. So that way it will reduces the uh, some time that is associated with the function call and also function definition. So let us see the more details about this. So initially we will let, uh, work on, let me stop this video. Yeah, on recursive functions. Recursive functions are a type of function in programming that calls to itself. So they are commonly used in situations where problem can be divided into smaller, similar sub problems I was telling you. And whenever you are using a recursive function, the programmer has to be careful enough in handling the recursion. So because otherwise the recursion will uh, take you to the infinite loop. So every recursive approach will uh, have to handle the two conditions. One is base case of the recursion where the base case will stop the process of recursion because the function is calling to itself. How many number of times you call, there must be a scenario where you meet some certain set of condition where you stop calling the function that is called the stop criteria, which also we call it as a base case. And also then recursive case. In recursive case, the function calls to itself with a modified set of values in the function parameters. Uh, then that is used to uh, at least solve the actual original problem in a stepwise manner. So each recursive call should ideally reduce the problem size or the complexity of the problem. Let us look at this small example. So I have taken a small example program where we try to calculate the factorial of a given number. So I am defining the factorial function you can see. So just read the n value from the keyboard and then I am invoking the function. I want to calculate the factorial of a given number. So the function call will push the control to the function definition. And in my base case is if n is equal to 0, means 0 factorial or 1 factorial, we know it is 1. So then I stop my recursive approach. So this will return 1. Or else what I will do is I will repeat my recursion. But see, instead of calculating the n factorial, I, I will be calculating the n minus 1 factorial. So that way we are, we, are, we, are, we are moving closer to the solution of the given problem. So how this actually will work out? Let us see. So initially I am calling, see fact, imagine that I am calling the fact of 5. So if you look at the definition, it becomes the 5 star fact of 4. And the fact of 4 will be replaced again again with 4 star fact of 3. And then this fact of 3 is replaced with 3 star fact of 2. So the recursion goes on. And this fact of 2 will be replaced with 2 star fact of 1. So this fact of 1, because n becomes 1, it is replaced with 1 where the recursion stops. So the value goes back. To the previous step, then fact of 2 is replaced with, in fact, this is with the 2 star 1. And the fact of 3 will be replaced with, this will be replaced with, in fact, 3 star, 2 star 1. And this fact, and the fact of 4 is replaced with 4 star, 3 star, 2 star 1. So we use this backtracking approach. In fact, the recursive calls will be managed by the operating system using a stack. Initially, we push the fact of 5, the written value 
uh, into the stack where, where should the control should come back the return value and the function name will be pushed in then fact of four will be pushed then fact of three it goes on the stack goes on in the upward direction then fact of two then we will come to fact of one so the return value of fact of one will come to the definition of fact of two yes and the return value of fact of two will come to the definition of fact of three and the return value of fact of three will come to the definition of fact of four and the return value will come to the definition of the fact of five in fact in the fact of five we have written five star fact of four so this will be replaced so the recursive calls will be pushed into the stack so this is a stack is a data structure which allows the user to insert and delete the data items uh, from the single end so it is also called as first in first out data structure so recursive calls are managed using the concept of stack so this is how the recursion will work out but unfortunately if you are really for example someone else uh, incidentally if you write like this say fact of some x you are defining okay is equal to c uh, for example you are you want to calculate the factorial so is equal to say if you write x star fact of x minus 1 so if, if you write like this what happens this becomes the recursion becomes infinite unfortunately it will give you a runtime error because you will be pushing the infinity number of function calls into the stack the whole memory the stack memory is not fit enough to uh, accommodate all these function calls so one has to be very careful about the recursion so we solve many problems using the concept of recursion the classical problems like Fibonacci series gcd of given two numbers uh, uh anite hours problem a factorial of a given number some of the n natural numbers so all these are the classical problems related to the recursion so we will talk about the one more problem that is called fibonacci series what is fibonacci series in fact it is a series in which first two terms are 0 comma 1 and the third term onwards uh, will be found as some of the preceded two terms uh, that is 0 plus 1 is 1 then 1 plus 1 is 2 then 1 plus 2 is 3 2 plus 3 is 5 that's what the, this is the series so you may be asked to write a program that will print see uh, first n terms n terms of uh, fibonacci series in terms of Fibonacci series so how do you do that using the recursion so in case of recursion you need to uh, find out the uh, recursive equation for example see so i just i will define this Fibonacci series as f of n and uh, yeah uh, you can leave the logic uh, for 0 comma 1 because f of 0 and f of 1 are 1 so the third term onwards it is simply sum of the uh, i will write a recursive equation f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2 what is the base case the base case is f of 0 is equal to say uh, 0 and then f of 1 is equal to 1 so these are the base cases which will stop the recursion and uh, otherwise uh, the recursive approach will be using this logic to solve the given problem so i want to print the n terms in the fibonacci series how do i do that uh, so i see i need to make out the what is the uh, fibonacci value of the fib of 0 and what is the fibonacci value of fib of 1 then fib of 2 so on if i want to print the n terms so how many n terms i want to print so i am supposed to uh, call n times the fib function using the recursive approach where the each function will be calculating the uh, the value at the required uh, at the specified position in the given series so we will see how this program can be uh, written uh, at my ideal uh, let us see uh, i want to calculate the fibonacci series so let me define a function yes now you can okay yeah, let me define the function as uh, fib so which will uh, take the parameter say again so so what is that logic is the base case is if n is equal to i say if n is equal to 0 or n is equal to 1 so what has to be done you have to stop the recursion means you know the position value that is written and if it is 0 yes i'm sorry if it is 0 it is 0 because first two terms are constant first two terms are 0 comma n so or else uh, what is what need to be done so you have to return what is that the recursion has to be used here so the recursive equation is fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2 right so that's what the uh, recursive approach so because it is some of the third term onwards it is simply some of the preceded two terms i hope you are getting me yeah then so how do i call this how do i pass this value yes you can get the input yeah i want to get the input say x uh, or n not an issue so n is equal to simply yeah i want to get the input from the keyboard this time so let me write take my input enter n value okay so after getting the n value now uh, what need to be done <coughs> so after receiving the n value so let me place one more parenthesis so i need to call the function but the fibonacci series you need to invoke this function for every possible position so i have to take a loop for 
i is equal to say 0 or i can say i in range 0 to n so what need to be done so you have to invoke this because it is returning a value you can either invoke this function as a parameter in the print statement yeah that's okay you can also do that so print see pib of i so yes so let me see this uh, is it okay or any errors are there we will see errors enter n value so let me give so i'm getting actually 10 values more or less you can fix the n value i could be n minus 1 or n minus 2 that's no issue but see uh, yeah it is not in the form of series so how do i get it in the form of series yes you can see right wait for a while let me close this window yeah so uh instead of printing new line after every number so so what could be the separator we can write in the printer yes so some space so better so that will give you the look and feel of the fibonacci series right let me run it enter n value say 10 so it's not coming yes not separator and we need to write the end also not the new line i want to write so however the by default it will be printing one space the print statement yes so let me save it let me run it this time so let us yeah you can see that so how many actually one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so i'm getting ten values so this is the way how the recursion will be working so one has to be careful enough uh, but what is the advantage of recursion is yeah so the, it can improve the code uh, readability because the, uh, simply uh, it will make you to write a very concise code so with that let me move on to the uh, anonymous functions or lambda functions these are the special uh, functions which are defined using the keyword lambda so almost they work like inline functions if you are aware of c++ so in c++ we have inline function where the uh, function call uh, simply replace with the function definition the control will not jump from one place to another place the place where the function is invoked there itself it is replaced with the expression and the expression will be evaluated and the evaluated value will be written back to the place where the uh, lambda function is being invoked that is the beauty of the lambda function in python programming so you can see how it can be defined so the syntax is that you use the keyword lambda and the arguments list or the means the variables and what is the result to be uh, what is the operation to be performed on the arguments list and in fact the whole the evaluated value uh, will be returned back return back to the back to the place where from function is called so in fact the lambda functions uh, uh, will be used with map and filter uh, comma reduce methods where uh, where the where the methods are expecting a function as an argument uh, we will be uh, actually using the uh, the actual advantage of the lambda function so but in the normal case you can see that yeah the how do you call the uh, when you call this function as sum so initially what happens where sum is defined uh, it will look uh, look at the name of the function it goes to the name and now it's not defined as a function because defined keyword is not there then it will find the lambda word lambda keyword then x will be uh, incremented to x plus one and the whole the value of six will be written back the value of six will be written back so that way you can look at this so one of the advantages is yeah the, the advantage of this lambda function is you can experience when it is uh, used with uh, filter map and reduce methods okay and one more thing is um, if you define a function that returns a value you need to write the return statement but in case of lambda functions the lambda function will automatically return the uh, value from the place where it is defined so let us look at the usage of this lambda function with respect to the uh, the filter map and reduce methods the filter is uh, normally used to filter the values from the given sequence based on some condition for example if i give the uh, say i define the function as say some um, say yes and the sequence is some of the n natural numbers i want to uh, give uh, sorry sequence of natural numbers uh, then what happens i want to uh, i want to filter these numbers only even numbers uh, are odd numbers so that way how you can see without using uh, this lambda function uh, initially how do we do that uh, many number of lines of code is actually required so i am using uh, is even is a function this is passed as a argument so when it is used with the filter uh, the iteratively filter works like iterative statement and iteratively uh, each element uh, each element is passed here he is even uh, uh, the each value from the list is taken is even of zero and the, uh, the return value 
and is even of 5. So that will be repeated for every list and the return value, in fact, all these return values of these functions will be again back to a memory stream where the, uh, the return value, if it is true, the actual value comes, if it is even, so the return value will be that number. So if it is 5, it is odd number. So obviously 0, 10, 20, 30 will be returned back to a memory stream and that's what the uh, filter method is doing. So this is a, a stream. So memory stream and now I want to map this memory stream to a list, to a new list. So then my list variable will be pointing out this memory stream. Thereafter, I can able to access all the elements in the memory stream in the form of a list that you can see. Okay. So that's what uh, this easy even method is now instead of going back to the function and coming again back uh, to the place where the function is passed as an argument, you can just write a lambda function that is replaced with a simple expression. So when it is invoked, so it is replaced with a simple expression. Okay. So and the return, uh, the result also will be automatically written back to the same place. So if it is uh, div dividing, uh, the number is divided by two and the number is written there. So that way it will reduce the lot of code over there. So the code becomes very concise. The readability of the code will be improved. So this, the same function can be also used with a map. So in case of filter, we'll be filtering the values. The map will be the mapping the, uh, the given list of values. It will reduce the given list of values and maps to the sublist. Okay, there you can use any mathematical uh, operation over there. So uh, in fact, this list could be, uh, I, I mean to say it's not sublist actually. So the, you can apply uh, an operation on every element of the list. So the uh, the output of this lambda function also will have the same number of list items, but they're modified updated list items. What I'm doing is, uh, so I'm supplying every uh, every list item as a parameter to this function, uh, lambda function, then what it will be doing on the given parameter, it will doubles the value and it will return back into the memory stream where the, again, the conversion happens. So we are converting that memory stream object to the list object. So there onwards, you can access the elements in the form of a list. So same with the reduce method, but reduce is not a simple library function. You need to import uh, function tools model. Uh, sorry, uh, from imp, uh, from function tools, we need to import uh, uh, the uh, all the models uh, because I have placed a star here means all the models and functions are imported from the function tools. Then what the function actually the reduce method will be doing is it is actually performing the aggregate operations uh, using the lambda function. So what I'm doing is I'm supplying the list here and the expression is being written is whatever the elements you are passing over there we that has to, all the elements have has to be summed up so so that way it will return the aggregate value of the entire list so aggregate value means sum of the list elements so what is the sum here it is 150 you will get the 150 so lambda functions are more useful with respect to the this filter map and uh, reduce methods rather than uh, using the lambda functions on their own so i hope uh, it is very clear so you can uh, really want to uh, go through further details uh, you can work on uh, any of these references given here. So with this, I would like to conclude the sessions on uh, functional programming in Python and functions in uh, Python. Any, uh, If you have any queries, just feel free to contact me. Okay, thank you.